Greetings. Cheers. Aloha. And welcome. So super cool if you've come here to play live with me. <laughs> and I think I got my lighting. It may it may be too much light. Hmm. Well, can we be in the glow today? <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm not afraid. I'll take the glow. I've been thinking about that word golden, especially as I live in the golden state and on Golden Avenue even. <laughs> so staying golden, feeling golden. <sighs> and doesn't an idea like that already start to bring up some imagery? Imagination, yeah. Let's, um, yeah, that's what we're going to dip into today. See what, hmm, might be some, huh, ancient yet pioneering, universal, and yet somehow new to so many of us. Me too. Imagination. Welcome, imagination. We're going to take you on a little bit. See what happens. So, yeah, and I, I might have kitty visitors. There's one of them. I like that. The kitties. I wonder if the kitties imagine. Hmm. How much different is the kitty's life? If they're not imagining, they're just being in the moment, sniffing the smells, gravitating to the next cozy spot, breathing and just being and purring, purring their way through their day. Hmm. Kind of some cool conquest for us. I'm up for that. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. And again, I appreciate your taking in the lighting with me. Mm. So let's settle in together because it seems what comes out here is some play with perspective and I suppose some psychology, but also a little um, weaving in of what might feel more like practice. Um, so that part of being here is that we're going to tune in and tune up how we're feeling, how we're thinking, how we're focusing, how we're experiencing our moments and ourselves, <laughs> oh, and all of it, really. So I imagine it's going to be a good time. <laughs> And I so appreciate you being here with me. So, cheers. So, here I am in my little space. And I think I'd like to get us a little more centered and calm and settled in and listening before we move forward. So, in your seat, invite yourself to do a little shimmy a little shift, get your cozies on and your cup of something with you, and let's just say cheers to here and now. And let's let ourselves settle in more to here and now. wherever, whenever this here and now hits you, <laughs> whether you're with me live now, dipping into this magic moment, or you're catching this by the archive, we can do the moment you're in. <laughs> so, and in some of our, what might be called yogi ways, we can shift more 
into listening, hearing sound, feeling sensations, getting into the sights around us, and just inviting ourselves more into right now, and letting stillness join the party, revolutionary stillness. Ah. Relaxing, settling in. Remember those power tools of relaxing face and jaw, like a domino effect going down the bod. And just see what you can do to soften and relax the rest of you. And again, invite yourself to settle into some stillness, to balance out all that action, all that doing, with some time to just be and get still. Tune in to where you're starting from today through some of that listening, that feeling, or that sensing, and even letting your attention come a little more inward and just checking out how you're feeling as we get started. And remember, such a beautiful part of these practices and this way of life is to just be more feeling oriented through the day and to be tuning more into how we're feeling in this moment and then checking out how we might tune it up to enjoy it more, to allow it more, and to create more even of what we do want. So let's settle into now, check out how we're doing, get back in that feeling mode, tune into where we're at now with that super, uber important non-judgment. Oh. Still uh, learning the depths of that myself. <laughs> so bringing non-judgment in on the approach, especially right now, or whatever we're noticing, where we're starting from, simply where we're at, where we're jumping off from. So whatever was true for you, just noting that, and then let's see what we can change, make even better. And yeah, we're going to focus more toward imagination. And what role does imagination play in our lives, in our mental health, in our physical health, in what we're creating in our reality? So we can be intentional with our imagination. I will do a little bit of that. And then even just Realizing how we're using our imagination and reigniting our brains <laughs> so that we can let that imagination be the power tool that it is and um, make sure we're using it how we want to use it. So as we settle in and even just aware of whatever imagining were happening as we came into this broadcast. As we kind of look back on the moments before we got here. And this just starts to get us in that observer mode, noticing, watching how we're doing, and then tuning more into a higher, wiser self, an inner you, an inner me that can be aware of all these things without judgment and with that important love and even appreciation for everything that is and everything that's being created because of what is. So shifting into that, that inner connection. And remember that's a lot what called this practices of union, union, yoga, same thing, aligning with that part of you, that part of me, that part of we, and even if you want to get in playfully in touch with non-physical elements, you can always do that for yourself and enjoy the feelings of spirit, not only within you, but around you. So whatever you can see that as, and whatever you call that, whether you like that word, God, or spirit, or source, 
energy, or all of our ancestors, the angels, your non-physical round table, whatever you want to call it. Let this be about connecting more with that part of you and that part of infinite you and infinite, I like to think infinite me and infinite we. What would it be like to be functioning from that place <clears throat> more? And so again, remembering that if we want to get into more union, more alignment, it can be about aligning with that part of ourselves, that part of our consciousness, that part of our reality, that part of right now. And even seeing and feeling those elements and everything we're coming in contact with, everyone, <laughs> and seeing it all as part of the divine party. <laughs> so, Flipping into the non-judgment, more feelings of relaxed business and ease, and even more quiet. Quieting down that mind, even for a moment, just being able to do that so that we can get into this mode more and get into right now more. <sighs> And even relaxing the mind like it's just another muscle. Inviting the sounds in more. Playing with, already starting to play with how we can start to hone the attention even just a little bit to help that mind. And this starts to touch on imagination a little bit. But even just right now, choosing to listen more to the sound, whether it's of this broadcast or maybe a bird song outside or even a car alarm <laughs> or even a child crying someone else's child hopefully not yours if yours is crying go help it <laughs> um, yeah starting to take a look at what's happening in that mind it's part of the settling in so looking at the bod the energy the mind what kinds of thoughts? And this is where we get into that meditative mind, that meditative mode. But really we can be in all day long. Certainly we can practice it extra when we're on a mat or engaged in even more what feels like practice. Um, and that's why some of us love to blend a thing like meditation, a mindset like meditation with an activity because it can make it that much easier to make it all about here and now and presence and sensation and awareness and attention so even a game of basketball is a rad meditation <laughs> whether you're watching it or playing it um, so the so part of that is just starting to look at mind what's been happening there start to notice how that might even so obviously correspond with how you're feeling or not so obviously <laughs> and already moving into some thankfulness that we can uh, take a look, take a shift, take a dive into something even better and lots of good reasons to do that really. As much as great things have come from feelings of pain and anguish and not good, imagine what comes from allowing ourselves to feel even better and how that affects us physically mentally, energetically, and even shifts our reality. So as we let ourselves get toward tuning in more, tuning up more, remember we are all energy. We now really get vibration, sending out a frequency, feel in a frequency, our feelings telling us about what that frequency is in the moment. And so, for fun reason, shifting into an even better feeling frequency with some of these tools, some of these perspectives, some of this power that we have and we might as well use. 
but knowing that we're shifting our energy, shifting our vibration, lifting it, raising it, strengthening it, and that's blasting out in some new, fresh ways. And going to start to really affect what, what we're creating and what we're inviting in, what we're enjoying and experiencing. So the better we're feeling, the better we're vibing, and the better we're creating. So, all of this in these great efforts and aims to just feel better, enjoy the ride, and live and love more of what we do want. Hmm. So part of this can be shifting perspectives into how we're holding ourselves, how we're carrying ourselves, how we're talking to ourselves, how we're imagining to ourselves. And so this is about some of that. What can we do on the inside with ourselves to tune in and tune up to that best feeling place, both for ourselves and for everyone we love. And to really harness that mind as a tool that it can be, start to mm -hmm, tap in to some of what's possible with this cool thing called the mind. And letting ourselves be open and yet focused with what's going on up there. And, you know, even as I choose a topic like this, it's, you know, it's because I'm right in there with you. I am exploring this and, like, discovering this and realizing this. Um, so I'm not, it's fun that I'm not necessarily here to teach you anything or to train you for anything <laughs> official. But just to dip in with you to what I'm seeing and feeling and understanding about a tool like imagination. So as we're settling in, before we get into the topic more, <sighs> maybe we can bring our hands in that cool prayer position. That'll put the hands over the heart. Uh, relax, settle, ease, smile. Listen, feel. Quiet. Breathing. Maybe a little more into your belly. Maybe some longer exhales. And then maybe you want to invite the hands into another mudra. Let's try that classic index finger to thumb. Correlates with really getting connected with that inner you, that wiser you, that divine you. Right now, here and now, allowing that connection, that alignment, that perspective. And getting more comfortable with that, more familiar with that is your way of being. So practicing right now to carry into life. And that's what's so cool about a lot of this stuff is you can do something like this mudra anywhere, anytime for yourself. And so right away we could see adding this, how does this relate to imagination? And of course, we can always consider what, what else we might be doing with the mind in that moment. Or the attention or the awareness or the focus. But simply to use something like this, like so. Oh, especially if we're feeling a little off, a little frazzled, a little overwhelmed, angry, frustrated, upset, even sad, lonely, disconnected, that we might consider, you know, like, oh, mudra. And that right away, we know we're using that and kind of choosing to let our focus be more about connection right now and how we can create that and facilitate that 
and then shifting gears right away. And the more we do it, the stronger that's going to get for us. It just becomes like just one of the simple power tools for us superhero folks in the world. And really, I feel like we all have these powers. We're just choosing whether or not to tap into them. So imagination, a big one. So when I add this mudra, and as I've settled myself in, let's look a little bit of imagination. Shall we? Now I think I'm going to take a sip of my something. I've got hot water with lemon here. And so, you know, imagination, I feel like, is something that long ago I started to see and hear about how important imagination is and that it, we could use our imagination and create things with our imagination. And so I felt like, you know, 15 years ago, I was starting to want to share a vision of a more imaginative life and letting ourselves be more imaginative as a way to <clears throat> tune in and um, share beautiful things. Create, I think I was thinking more and more in an artistic way. We might like imagine a painting and then paint it. And so even just that seemed like important. <laughs> And then, you know, over my years of training and study with yoga and meditation and even bits of psychology and mental health, it's super interesting to take a look and really start to consider what imagination is and what we can do with it. And we're at a really cool time because a lot of folks are starting to even run research studies checking this stuff out because we we like the, the scientific research so much right now to prove things. So we like to see it to believe it. <laughs> but that's some of the interesting perspective here and that it's almost like this underground secret at the same time. I've loved listening to people like Earl Nightingale talking about the strange secret and Neville Goddard talking about imagination is everything and you know so many teachers who remind me of the power of imagination and I love how even someone like Bashar points out that we humans when you look at that word in imagination, I don't know if you've heard how he breaks that down, that we are I and then magi nation. We are a nation of magi <laughs> as humans on the earth. And it's just so interesting and cool because as I keep studying various traditions and perspectives and philosophies and spiritual stuff, everybody's talking about this. <laughs> it's like it's the big underlying thread that every um, tradition, every religion, um, every philosophy talks about. But somehow it's still something that hmm, a lot of us perhaps are misusing. That's something I love that I've gotten to this. But imagination isn't something that we can not be using, that we, that we don't use. It can't, it can't be not used. It can only be misused. So that becomes like, oh my gosh, the big reasoning here is we're using imagination already. Like guaranteed, every normally functioning human brain is using imagination every day, all day long, already. <sighs> I have to like breathe with that for a moment. <laughs> So, it's not about choosing whether or not to use it. It's about choosing and realizing 
power user. Hmm. And how much that affects us. Affects our perceptions and feelings about the past. How we're imagining our past. How much this imagination affects our right now. I mean, how often are we using up right now imagining <laughs> about what's next in our day or what's later in the week or, or replaying something that happened in the past instead of being here now for what's, what's really going on. And I know I'm certainly guilty of that one. But remember, non-judgment, non-judgment. Non <laughs> Um, and again, that's where this just simply observing what's been happening with that non-judgment is so important as we see these things in ourselves and these processes and really, really making sure we don't get stuck and just thinking, God, what the hell's my problem and <laughs> turning it into another reason to imagine about how, how lame we are <laughs> and what we're doing wrong. So observing. Just noticing what has been, even what is, and then harnessing the power that we can imagine something different as we move forward. And even imagine something different right now. Use that imagination more with memories, envisioning that feel better and that go along more with what we do want and even what feels more true for us. And you know that's what's so cool is that those feelings can keep being our guidance because our feelings will tell us about how we're doing with imagination, won't they? So often if we notice all of a sudden we're not feeling good. We could, if we could look back at what, what's been going on in that mind and what we've been using that imagination towards, whether it's been replaying a past event or thinking about something to come, imagining something to come, imagining some of the worst ways those things could go, looking for the problems, staying stuck on the problems. <laughs> So again, that's where this just noticing, observing, watching ourselves is at the heart of the practice. If we keep learning, keep cleaning it up, keep choosing more of what we do want, and then more and more using intentional ways with the mind, with the imagination, to help it, let it help us feel better and start to powerfully even shift how we feel, to even heal us. I think most people now have heard about how there are people out there who have completely used their mind and really imagination to completely heal and shift things. And, you know, I get excited about, because we see how much some of this relates to our belief <coughs> of what's possible. And that's such a big piece with imagination is that it ties in a lot to what we believe is possible. And we, a lot of the time, may only let ourselves imagine what we believe is possible. And then sometimes, you know, that we're just continuing to imagine the same as what has been. And so it gets even harder to imagine what is possible because we just keep reimagining what has been. And what if whatever we're imagining in our head is actually what starts to happen in our reality? I mean, that's a piece that some of us, it's hard to really buy in. It's really hard to wrap our brains around that we, it could be that easy or simple. But I think if we take a look more and more 
we see that it is the most of us. If we take a look at what's been happening for us and what we've been imagining, it may not be a perfect match, but I bet it's a feeling match. The types of things we've been imagining about has gone along with the kinds of things we've been experiencing. Right? And so that can feel like heavy. But it also is some of the light that we could start to really realize that we are the creators. We are the imaginers. And I love when some of these teachers I've been listening to remind that everything that's been created, every idea, every invention, every business, every book, every story, every everything was imagined first by someone or someone. It's like undeniable what a role imagination plays in creation, at least with some of the bigger stuff, right? But it's like, how much does my imagination really create what happens in my day? But this is that, yeah, what we're going for. <laughs> and so imagining more for the bigger stuff and creating what we do want, but also looking at how we're imagining all our moments, whether it's Imagining forward as we make our coffee, or go to lunch with a friend, or the husband comes home, or our kid wakes up from a nap. What are we imagining that to be? And how close does that correlate with what we wind up rendezvousing with? How much do we get what we expect? And if we really started to believe more, and understand that we're creating with that imagination what different kinds of things would we choose to be imagining. So that's where I think the exciting join is here, is if we can really embrace that we have this power, we're using this power, whether we know it or not, but the good news is this power can do it all and it can reinvent a reality. This is where it gets interesting that we can either continue to imagine kind of what has been forward and that that works great if we like what we what's happening we can keep imagining that. And again, this is where it's nice for, if we're still having a hard time grasping this idea that imagining creates. I love some of the teachers that have really gotten me in touch with this lately that our brain is always transmitting a frequency, especially when we are having a thought or imagining something, and especially when we blend it with a strong feeling. And so again, we're often, we are doing this all day long anyway. And that's why the things that we are the most feeling about, whether excited or scared, are the ones that most often come along. But our privilege, our pleasure is to re, I want to say harness, but that sounds a little harsh, re-invite the imagination back into a a playful zone, a possible zone, an infinite zone, a belief zone. And as we play with this and start to see things shift, it's nice because that'll build our belief, right? But you know, a lot of teachers are starting to remind us, and, and teachers like who've been around for a long time, like that dude Jesus, or Buddha, or you know, current teachers that are writing books that we're reading, that although so many of us feel more comfortable perhaps living in the zone of seeing as believing, that actually we get more powerful when we realize that it's believing is seeing. So when we start to really believe 
and understand how powerful this imagination is. <clears throat> this imagination of yours. This imagination of mine. And this imagination of ours. When we, when we imagine with others, how cool is that? And again, we often do wind up doing that in conversation. We're kind of co-creating a perspective, imagining things together, <clears throat> depending on our focus. <laughs> um, so really powerful. We're probably just starting to really understand the power of that. I mean, that's kind of this mastermind idea. Blending imagination and and then getting back to how imagination can be such a spiritual thing. I love that some of these teachers talk about that our imagination is the God within us. Like that's it. Imagination is is God. That's our God self, our God power, is our imagination. I think that's pretty huge. <laughs> and cool. Um, and that as we get more into how we can choose and align with the power of that imagination that we get, we realize that's our creative power, is our imagination. And as we really get clearer and clearer with how we're using it, how we're choosing it, this is going to be the bomb, <laughs> the thing that can really shift it all. So, yeah, we've seen already some people do this with something like a chronic disease or an illness or a condition of the body that has a lot to do with that belief of what's possible. But as you start to let yourself believe that it's possible that you could imagine yourself better and to consider even what happens Let's say you have a, a healing kidney situation. What happens to the body as you let yourself intentionally imagine your body doing powerful healing? Imagine the natural regeneration of cells that's always happening and the replenishing that's going on from the healthy things you're putting in your body and the fresh water. And as you breathe in fresh life, fresh energy, even love, even imagining colors that feel right around that area. If you start to use your imagination like that, even in that moment, first of all, what's the change of the physiology? <clears throat> and a lot of uh, healing traditions, especially more natural therapies, really show and indicate that the human body just needs some help, some soothing, but its nature is to return to homeostasis and to really get back to health and wellness if we will but allow it. And so imagination becomes perhaps one of the biggest tools I'm starting to see in something like our health. And some of these teachers I love will point out that we can't even change something on the outside if we can't imagine it first. So I think that's a powerful one, say, with something like normalizing weight. If we really know we'd like to lighten up and you know get back to a weight that feels even more like how we want to feel, whatever that is for your unique body. Um, if we're going after it with diet and exercise and working every day, but yet we're still imagining ourselves the same every day. There's a kitty. <laughs> um, and if we can't imagine ourselves at that weight, at that level of fitness like we want, then how the heck is it going to happen? Like, that's pretty clear that if we can't imagine it, it's pretty unlikely to happen. Like, we have to be able to imagine something for it to really come through and, and, and happen for us. So, yeah, that's just one specific with the body, how some of this can play out. And then again, let's think about the opposite. What's happening to the body when 
if I have this kidney condition and every day I'm thinking about how sick my kidney is and feeling so bad and worrying about it and picturing what's going to go wrong next and imagining myself maybe even at the hospital a month from now because it's going to get worse and um, yeah, what's that creating? But that, you know, we almost I think have gotten where we feel safer using imagination like that, like preparing for the worst. Imagination emergency preparedness. <laughs> so this is interesting and I'm sure it has its value and again, I don't want to be judging myself or anyone for this. But again, as we just take a look with that objective perspective, like, okay, that's interesting that I'm choosing to imagine the worst here. Or even what they told me would happen. This is where it becomes a lot about aligning you with you and you getting better at your guidance. And even if that includes loving others around you, whether they're physical or non-physical, including their perspectives and their guidance, but when it comes down to it, it has to feel right for you and you have to gently let yourself get into that place of belief for any of that imagining to feel very good. So, imagining softly towards more of what you do want slowly up in your level of belief and then things start to just roll right in and so yeah in practices like yoga and meditation we use imagination a lot you've probably noticed so you can use it in simple ways to just clear the mind quiet the mind connect the mind refresh the mind renew the mind and again all that's great for the body and the energy and the vibration so doing things like I love to mention like just a little mental windshield wipe of the brain imagining that you can clear the thought or I have some friends who've told me they like to like picture it like a chalkboard they can erase or wipe off even just for a moment or five moments for the clarity the piece of that and now we know more than ever that creative mind works great right after moments of quiet and refreshment. And hey, the more moments of quiet and refreshment, the more we're actually here for magical now. Woohoo! What a concept. <laughs> um, but we can also do things like, like we talked about. If we had a, a something that we're healing, we can intentionally imagine that part of us healing and maybe sending light or color or feeling that around those areas or just imagining and feeling whatever might come to you as a version of healing and restoration and regeneration and just again now we know the human body's doing that so it's not even that you have to make yourself some, do something you don't believe because that doesn't seem to work very well but yeah whatever you can believe about imagining things getting better and yes, any actions we take that help us go in that direction of imagination of what we're imagining is going to strengthen it all. And I think what's really cool is that the more we're imagining what we do want, which leads to feeling better, we actually want to take action because this becomes about, you know, of course, living more from a place of feeling it out and moving more towards what we love and what we're excited about. So the more we're doing that, the momentum of that, and the more we're imagining toward what we do want and shifting perspectives, it's just we get stronger at this and our level of, belief, level of belief starts to go up. And so what we even let ourselves imagine starts to go up. And so what we let ourselves create starts to go up. Make sense? So that's whether it's with our bodies, with our minds and our emotions. We can imagine how good can we imagine feeling? How happy can we see ourselves being? What do we believe is possible with just feeling good and enjoying life? Is it possible? Can you imagine that? Yeah, probably not possible if we can't imagine. 
right? So we need to get better at playing with, being brave with that imagination, inviting the belief along. And then, yes, how much does this imagining affect our relations with others? I think this is really big stuff. And again, kind of <laughs> maybe a little leading edge and hard for some to really conceive of, but how much of our relationships are just imagined into being? And whatever's happening now in these relationships, how much of that is because of like in a perpetual imagination thing? Are we perpetually imagining again and again what we've seen in this relationship and just creating more of that? And maybe closing out the possibility of other types of rendezvous with this person even. Or are we entering each moment, each relationship, wouldn't this be the delight? Just imagining it, imagining it to be as good as it can be and fresh and sweet and loving and real and present. How different do we feel when we go into that rendezvous? Imagine that and consider just our physiology, how it changes as we're imagining that. How our energy changes, vibration, frequency, and yeah, I'll remember like attracting like. And yeah, it's really interesting that, you know, a lot of these really cool teachers and perspectives will talk about the possibility of parallel realities existing right now and so as we open to that possibility we might even open more about our imagination the power of that the choosing of that and that maybe there are different versions different channels even we could click into so even like with a relationship are there various versions of your partner or your parents or your child that do exist? And you can imagine any of them to be true, whether it's the cranky version or the inspired, relaxed version. And so what are you imagining that you're going to rendezvous with today, tomorrow, next week? And how much of that is creating what actually you're going to find? And again, what if you could let yourself really imagine the best that you can imagine and even better? How much more likely are we to find that, to rendezvous with that? And again, if it's parallel realities, parallel persons, <laughs> versions of that person you love, which one are you going to choose? Are you going to imagine yourself rendezvousing with? And even as we imagine ourselves, how are we imagining ourselves? How are we imagining ourselves handling our moments, whether they're the joyful ones or the challenging ones? How are we imagining things will work out? How much are we imagining toward the solution? instead of imagining every aspect of the problem direction. <laughs> and again, bringing in that loving non-judgment with all of this so that we take a look at what we're doing with imagination and all these aspects. We just lovingly can soothe ourselves back into a place more of what we do want. And so some of that may be just quiet, clear, and even windshield wiping mind, letting the energy get relaxed. But as we're feeling better and more relaxed and soothed and centered and quiet and tuned in, It can be really a power tool to take a look at how we're doing with imagination. What are we doing with imagination? We want to throw some better stuff in there. 
So yeah, whether you want to play with just the simplicity of the windshield wipe, mind as another muscle relaxing, or even imagining putting a picture there of something, someone you love, or an image that's soothing for you, refreshing for you, or maybe like a clear blue sky, or smooth, quiet surface of a lake. And just notice how that imagination affects how you feel. And so yeah, that is affecting your vibration. It's tuning you in, tuning you up. And the better we feel, generally the more aligned we are with that higher, wiser part of ourself. So as we imagine more for the better, the tuning in, the tuning up is revealed. <laughs> and then I want to bring up that imagination could also for sure be a place where we're receiving ideas and even guidance from big mind, infinite mind, all those who have gone before, our non-physical roundtables, our angels, spirit in all the ways. So tapping into imagination is like a meeting place with big mind. So both the place to be like channeling and allowing ideas and also brewing up and intentionally plotting ideas. And then what's cool is I think there is a momentum thing here with imagination too. That as we start to tune more tune more into what we are doing and start to shift to use the imagination more in a loving way with ourselves. Loving our way through watching what we're doing and shifting our way to using that imagination more for envisioning what feels good. Realizing the power of that. But also, yeah, it opens us up to this realm of being more connected, more aligned, more tuned in to all the great imaginings. So it's powerful stuff. Could we take hold of, really own this idea that we are this magi nation Imagining it all. Imagination as our key, our creative power. Imagination as God within. And I, I love sharing this idea with people of all ages. Consider though like children, if they're still open, we can all really just tap into our power more. What an awesome power tool. It's, I'm telling you, it feels like superhero stuff to me. <laughs> so once again, I had no trouble filling almost an hour. Felt like about 10 minutes to me. But I so appreciate you tuning in with me and playing with this subject as I, you know, just kind of muse around the tool of imagination as such a key in our lives and such a power that we can realize we're using. So we might as well shape up and shift how we're using it. Hmm, it's great stuff. So we can get ready to head back out into our day and ah, let ourselves keep playing without relaxing, the softening, the easing, the smiling, the stillness, the belly breathing. Those exhales, the listening, 
the feeling more quieting. More noticing. More feelings of love and appreciation. Imagining about more about what we love and appreciate. Mm. And more conscious, playful, powerful imagination. Perspective, creating our responses, creating our rendezvous, creating our health in mind and body, creating our energy, what we're vibing, how much does what we're imagining create our vibe. And then enjoying as imagination becomes more of just like a open door to what's possible. And maybe even more of what you are here to create and contribute and enjoy. It's all about enjoying the ride, isn't it? And even more how we can create the ride of our dreams and recognize how we're dreaming it into being in our own ways. Our very human, powerful ways. We're so powerful, so cool. I'm so thankful. So thankful for this power that we're just waking up to. It's really, really, really great stuff. So, I'll call it to a close. Thank you for being here with me. And I imagine that we'll all feel a little better, a little brighter, a little more powerful in choosing after taking the time here to tune in. So, Sending the best imaginings to you. And I sure appreciate the chance to share what's happening for me, where it's at, how it's going down. So, until next time, party on. Namaste. an audience.